So just to give you an intro, uh, just tell me for which examination you want to give a snap. Uh, JEE or SOMS, Strength of Material. Where I'm preparing for JEE KPSC A okay. interview. Okay, okay. What's the qualification? Sir, Masters, latest qualification. Uh, please uh, brief about yourself so I can understand about it. Okay. Okay, sir. So my name is Navi Digbarcha. I'm from Sri Nagar, Jammu and Kashmir, and. Uh, one second so yeah. I have, sir i have done my btech in mechanical engineering from local university so it's a private college in it's a private college in district saharanpur of uttar pradesh uh, i graduated in the year 2010 20 and after that i did my mtech from nit srinagar uh, so soon after completing my masters jkpsc announced the post of assistant engineer so since then i have been preparing for this. okay okay what's your master topic So sorry, sir. What's your master topic? In which uh, you are just completed your MTech? In which topic, sir? It, uh, my branch was this industrial tribology and maintenance management. Okay. So topic is. So you mean the project work? Yeah, yeah. So it was this analysis of uh, thin walled composite beams using abacus. Okay. 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 So just tell me what do you mean by fatigue load? Sir, so fatigue load. So that is repetitive in nature. It means either the magnitude will be changing with time, or the direction will be changing with time. What do you mean by endurance limit? Sir, so endurance limit. Sir, actually, I have not covered the machine design yet. It's not a machine design topic. It's also a strength of material topic. Okay, what do you mean by resilience? Sir, so resilience is the elastic energy stored in a body. Uh, due to elastic deformation within within the elastic range. Proof resilience. Proof resilience. Uh, we can say the maximum value of elastic, uh, maximum value of strain energy that gets stored in the body. Modulus of resilience. Uh, modulus of resilience. Sir, it will be proof resilience per unit volume. Toughness. Uh, sir, toughness. We can define toughness as the. Energy which can be stored in the body up to the fracture, up to the fracture point till it fractures. What are the various assumptions in the bending equation? Bending equation, uh, sir. One thing is that the deformations are elastic. Okay. And uh, another thing, we assume that initially the beam is straight. When we, I mean, before applying the load, we assume the beam to be straight. Okay. And. And one more assumption is that plane section. I think, sir, plane section before bending remains plane after bending also. Are you listening about that? That material is homogeneous and isotropic. Yes, sir. Material is homogeneous, isotropic. Most important. What is the meaning of homogeneous and isotropic? So homogeneous means the properties in a particular direction will be same, and particular point we will have same properties in all the directions. Okay. What do you mean by Hooke's law? So Hooke's law states that the stress is directly proportional to the strain within the elastic region, and it's valid up to the proportional limit. Or, and it is valid, sir, up to the proportional limit. So you are saying the both thing, proportional limit or elastic limit, which thing? So to be more accurate, it's valid up to proportional limit because after that we observe some non-linear characteristic. So always say up to the proportional limit, not the elastic limit. Okay. Yes, sir. Up to proportional. <laughs> Can you just define the stress-strain curve for the magnitude? What are the various points in that? So we have first we first we observe proportional uh, up, the proportional limit up to which the Hooke's law is valid. After that, uh, we have elastic limit, then yield point, uh, then sir we observe ultimate point, and finally the fracture point. What is the what do you mean by yield point? So yield point is after which there will be permanent deformation. Means if we load the plastic, if we load the material after the uh, after we have crossed the yield point, after we have exceeded the stresses corresponding to yield point, then permanent deformations will occur. There are two type of yield point uh, lie here. Are you know about it? Yes, sir. We have upper yield point and lower yield point. What is the difference between them?
Jag vet inte vad de är. Så jag är inte säker på det. Vad du menar med strain hardening? Så strain hardening means the increase in the strength uh, when the material is uh, stretched within the plastic region. So strength gets increased. That's when a strain hardening. If a if a body joint to be in a uh, composite way, in a compound and covered both way, so what are the properties remain same and change? In composite, yeah. Yeah. So this overall strength will increase, but the strain will remain same in both of them because they are stick together. Only that. Why we use the theory of failure? So theory of failure is used in places where complex stresses are acting because, uh, like in case of uniaxial loading, we know that the material will fail uh, when the stresses will exceed the yield point. If we talk of ductile materials, but in complex cases, it's not the case that uh, the material will only fail when the stresses cross the maximum value. There are chances that the strain will increase. I mean, strain will reach its maximum value, or the strain energy that we can store in a body that can reach its maximum value. So there are different theories, different reasons that how a material is going to fail. So that's why we have different theories of failure. So for or in the case of uniaxial loading, we are, we can't apply theory of failure. So in case of uniaxial, uh, in case of uniaxial loading, all the theories of failure will give the same result. Means uh, the stress will reach its maximum value at the same time, strain energy will reach the maximum value. At the same time, strain will reach the maximum value. So it will be ir irrespective of any theory we we use. We will get the same result in case of uniaxial loading. But that's not the case for complex loading. We Why we use the factor of safety? The factor of safety to make our material safe. For example, if we talk of a material like uh, like mild steel, we know okay. that the material is going to fail at two fifty megapascal approximately. So if we do not give any factor of safety, means if we take factor of safety as one, so we are saying that we can load this material up to uh, up to any value less than two fifty megapascal. But uh, we know that there can be some abnormalities. They think things will not always remain normal. So because of some abnormalities, there are chances that the strength will the stress will increase to two fifty megapascal, and which can lead to failure. But if we if we now if we give a factor of safety as two, so in that case we are saying that the stresses, the working stress should not exceed uh, 125 megapascal. So even if some abnormalities will take place, the stress increases 125. What do you Still mean by abnormality? Way. You are just saying that. So maybe some stresses increase increase suddenly. That's what I'm trying to say. So even if they cross 125 in that case, so. Still, the uh, the material is not going to fail, even if it reaches two hundred megapascal. Still, the material is not going to fail. So, to to, uh, to keep our operation safe, to make the the to make the operation safer, as that's the point behind giving the factor of safety. Why we use the Mohr circle? So Mohr circle, it's a graphical representation of uh, stresses on different planes: shear stress and normal stress. It makes our basically it makes our analysis simpler by just using by just drawing the Mohr circle. We can and we can see we can check that corresponding to different planes. What are the values of stresses and st uh, what are the values of shear stress and normal stresses? Okay, now wait. I will just give you some feedback about your interview. Yes, sir. Sure. Overall, you are a good. Your way of explanation is also good. आपके पास कॉन्फिडेंस है अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन कर रही चीजों को इट्स अ गुड थिंग बट आई थिंक लिटिल बिट यू आर लैक ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस और लैक ऑफ नॉलेज इस समय आपको थोड़ा सा रिवीजन की जरूरत है इस टाइप तो मटेरियल कई सारे आंसर आपने जो ऐसे दिए ना रेड जस्ट जस्ट लाइक अ जनरल आंसर जैसे कि आप बीटेक करके आए हो और आपको एक इंजीनियरिंग पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से आंसर देना चाहिए थोड़ा सा वो मुझे कहीं लैक कर रहा है कि जैसे इन द टर्म्स ऑफ आपको फैक्टर ऑफ सेफ्टी डिफाइन करना है या आपको थ्योरी ऑफ फेलियर डिफाइन करना है एब्रप चेंजेस वगैरह ये सब चीज यूज नहीं करते हम लोग थोड़ा सा डायरेक्टली ठीक है आपको थोड़ा सा रिवीजन एक बार करोगे देन यू विल बी कंफर्टेबल एंड गिव द आंसर मोर अप्रोप्रिएटली
थोड़ा सा एक बार रिवाइज करो बाकी सब ठीक है आपका अच्छा एक्सप्रेशन है आप आराम से आंसर देते हो जल्दीबाजी नहीं कर रहे सोच समझ के दे रहे हो इट्स अ गुड थिंग और इट इट मस्ट बी रिक्वायर बट क्या होता है कई बार हम लोग चीजें थोड़ी सी भूल जाते हैं छोटी छोटी चीजें तो वो अपने को रिवाइज करेंगे तो याद आ जाएंगे है ना थैंक यू थैंक यू